Hey guys, before today's video gets started, I got two things for you. One, we posted a video on the second channel about a build off we're having next week with the Boosted Boys. So go check out the details on that. Two, our shirt of the week, McFarland Garage. This is a sweet freaking shirt. And guys, this is gonna be the last shirt of the week for a while because we are gearing up for our winter drop. We're gonna have a ton of new Christmas and winter merch. It's gonna be freaking awesome. This is the last shirt of the week for a while. Get in the McFarland garage while you can, but for now, enjoy the video. Hell yeah, brother. You're on the Please McFarland YouTube channel. All right, James, you wanna introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Dr. Spramol. Not today's yet. Oh, this isn't science. Wrong, wrong this episode. This isn't science. Not on fire. Cut. Okay, we're good. Oh, dude. <laughs> hey, so listen, guys. Before we get into what we're going to be talking about today with Leroy, here is a clip of an adventure James and I went on yesterday to get an El Camino because, as you guys know, the current El Camino body that we have we're no longer using because of the extended quarter panels. It's easier to just get a whole new body at this point, so... But we're keeping the same chassis and frame, obviously, but check this out. Will it remain baby blue? It's red. <laughs> well, hold my mullet. Oh, dang, brother. What do you think? This is a cream puff right here. This I think this will do, this, right? This will do. This will do. Yeah. So, guys, we found this uh, El Camino on Facebook Marketplace. Right here, looking at it right now. A little bit of rust, but uh, probably actually in a little bit better condition than the blue one. So as you guys know, we needed a new body for the El Camino project because we, we extended the quarter panels on the other one. It's actually easier to just start over with a whole new body. So we found this thing, super cheap roller, has no motor or trans and we're here checking it out for the first time. Looks pretty good. Yeah. I like these wheels. It's a Unilug. It's got two patterns in there. Unilug. <laughs> hey dude, it's gonna look a little bit better on billet specialties. Got a flat tire up here, no big deal. Brown is peanut butter and tears. Yeah, Inside man. peanut butter, outside jelly, boy. I tell you <laughs> what. For real, dude. Holding a little bit of water back there. Yeah, it does have a little bit of rust, but I mean, everything works. The seals aren't in horrible shape. It's, it hasn't been parked that long, I don't think. It's got that, that mm. 80s aroma. Mm, that every musty. G oh, yeah. Every 80s GM car that sits outside smells like that. Damn. The rear bumper is a little bit jacked up. Front bumper is good, but we have a rear bumper off the blue car. That's it. Yeah, the rear bumper is a little rusty, but it ain't too bad. Jet skis, you know? Yeah, I mean, I'll literally, be doing things with the Elko. literally nothing is going to be used but uh, the body, so yeah. we don't have to worry about the frame being rusty or anything like that, but body as far as we can tell i mean it's it's not in horrible shape it's obviously been painted so hopefully there's not too much hidden bondo but we gave it the whole knock around sounds pretty good you can see a little bit of rust doors. here well, we got a set of doors you got a set of doors so okay well let's talk to this guy get this thing bought guys look at this gem that james and i just found Man, this thing's a they want 6500 for it though for a freaking 2000 yeah it might have blown air over time to get this yeah, that thing is kind of shot. Yeah, it looks like somebody drove down the side of it, though. It's a little beat. Yeah. Right we'll give alley. them a call just to see what they'll do. Uh, I wonder if they'll take three for it. If they take three for it, it'd be worth buying for something. No updates yet on the limo. We called the guy. We told him yeah. uh, 3000 bucks. we'd give him. He was like, no, I got some guy who's going to pay me five. Or he said he'd take oh, five. Yeah, five. And then he tried to hit us with the, I'll take five, though. So yeah, like, eh, we're working on that. Think about the profit you can make off a limo, though. I was thinking how funny it'd be to have a limo and try and dyno it. It'd be like hanging significantly off the front of the dyno. Limo. Getting it into this shop would be half of the struggle. That would be a struggle. Front tires are on the yellow, like the whole front yeah. is yeah. Yeah. off the lift. Snap in half. We're working on it. We're working on it. But that's, that's kind of the update as far as that. Today what we're going to be talking about is Leroy the Savage and also red ruby over in the other shop uh as you guys know leroy went 779 freaking 186 world cup let's go hell yeah and now we want to go faster to do that we're going to be changing up a few things i know a lot of you guys have been wanting some aerodynamics but i don't think that is our current issue right so for those of you who drag race a lot you understand this for those of you who are new to drag race and i'm going to try to do my best to explain it obviously being more aerodynamic helps 
You know, we could probably pick up 10 mile an hour. We could probably go 195 pretty easily with a body. But really, where you pick up monumental amounts of time is on the front half of the track. And aerodynamics don't come into play nearly as much there. The guys we're running with are going like 480s, 490s in the eighth. We're going 510. So we still have a lot to figure out on the front half of the track and pick up a bunch of time there. And then I think it'll be time for Arrow. And we did find a local company here who's gonna help us build some parts for it. So that's all to be coming in the future. But in order to get this thing faster in the first eighth mile of the track, we've come up with a few things. So for the last few years, Leroy's been running on boost by gear through the Holly. So that's four gears, four levels of boost. Doesn't give us a ton of adjustability, right? So each gear gets essentially one one value for the boost. You can ramp it and stuff, but it's really tricky with the timing. So we've always just kind of had a flat graph in each gear. Problem we had at World Cup is we have these amazing 60 foots now, but we have to run only nine pounds of boost through the whole gear because we can't ramp it in at the end. So once we're past that 60 foot mark, the car is just like, I'm waiting for boost. So what we have here, and this is why this is off. See this sensor? That is a speed sensor. We've never had a speed sensor on Leroy, believe it or not. So now we're gonna be able to have boost by speed. So instead of having only four values to change our boost off of, we'll have 185 values each mile per hour. We can have a different level of demanded boost. So, you know, say we the car is hooking perfect past the 60 foot, we can start ramping in boost right past the 60 foot or right past wherever we feel the car is ready to grab more power and hopefully be at 30 you know plus pounds of boost by by second year by yeah about four second year with this you're able to increase boost as the car accelerates so you can make the car accelerate faster by increasing the boost level yeah. as the speed you know, you know exactly where you are on the track yeah. depending gonna, on the mile per hour it's gonna be sweet and then we're gonna even set up a rear diff uh, speed sensor too hopefully so we can set up things in the computer even so if it sees a mismatch in speed between the rear wheels and the front wheels you know it can cut timing stuff like yeah, that there's so. like an increase where it's like 20 mile an hour faster in the rear than the front yeah. it'll take timing out to keep it at the same speed to so keep tires spin down yeah. and stuff like that kind of like a traction control but but not like where it's gonna be yeah. crazy so we got a whole bunch of plans though. We want to figure this thing out and dial it in completely so that we can start getting this thing down in the mid sevens where it should be. And obviously at that point, I really do want to find a body for it. Whether that's one giant body that fits over the top or a bunch of little pieces that just help with the aerodynamics. But the spirit of Leroy has always been how crazy he looks. So we'll have to keep that somehow. That does it for Leroy. Let's go talk about Ruby. So James, you put a styrofoam motor in. How much power do you think that thing could take? 4,700 horsepower with that pole. Wow, and they don't really look like very big pour, bore in that. What that size motor is this? LS1, buddy. LS1. So we talking about this thing or what? Well, we're talking about a styrofoam 5.7 that is gonna make about 2,800 horsepower. I say we, well, dude, this is enough of a sample right here. Yeah, it's got so. an LS ish in it now. This thing is serious. So guys, this is James Nova. Just tell me what year it is. This is a 1964 Chevy 2, known as a Deuce, post car. So it's a prized possession nasty. of mine. Had it for many of years. Raced it for about 14 of them. And uh, Golly. always been a nitrous guy, but gonna venture into the world of Deuce with this thing. So it's been down since James did a big wheelie right before Cooper and I met him, did a big old wheelie. Yeah. And uh, he's been rebuilding it for a turbo LS setup. So I think that's all we should tell them for now. Well, I can tease him, because I have. Yes. Oh yeah. I have pieces. He's got the turbo. He's got the turbo. Honestly, you know what I can see happening is the El Camino and this thing are gonna be competing. They're gonna be really fast. Well. See, oh my gosh! The thing that happens though, once James gets a hold of a boost controller, I know. I've never bought wastegates for a reason, you know. It yeah. make what it makes. Thankfully, you save a lot of money on gates. Yeah, it's single ninety one. Gonna be in here, kind of like so. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. 
put her wherever. Huge the exhaust housing is nuts. Yeah. Five inch. Yeah. Downpipe. Surprised you don't have this, you know, right? at home sitting on the counter as like yeah. a decorative piece. That's bigger than your child. Yeah, it weighs more than Oki does, that's for sure. <laughs> so cost about the same yeah, as a child. <laughs> probably does cost about the same. A lot of big plans for this. James is just kinda uh, doing a bunch of little stuff before we kinda get started on it, but it's gonna be on the channel. There's gonna be uh, a bunch of cool parts that we'll have for it. Yeah, we got a sweet piece from our boy Doug Cook at Motion Raceworks. Oh yeah, that thing's crazy. Mm -hmm. More billet, billet stuff. It Fancy. should go together pretty quick. Yeah, the motor. Kind of have everything. Right. So I have the block. I have pieces for the motor. It's at the machine shop being built. As you can see, I'm putting the mock-up motor in it to get the turbo kit built. Then it's uh, engine management, paint some stuff, and put it back together. Yeah, this is a scary, scary thing. So I mean, I'm not gonna tune this car. <laughs> I think James is a well there. No, I'm gonna bring in a tuner. I'm trying to make over 2,000 horsepower, so I'm gonna bring in a, a tuner for iron this thing out, get Build it ready. Build the base tune. Yeah, and then from there I'll be able to yeah. tune at the track with you know some fueling and some boost levels and stuff like yeah. that. The That'll match there. your block really well. The billet, it's really nice. Eh. <laughs> what? You didn't get a billet block, James? Oh, dude. Yeah. This is a sterno expense bill, but there is some expense spared when it comes to stuff like that. Yeah, dude, this thing is gonna be super gnarly. So yeah, that's, that's the best deal is to get someone to build a really nasty base tune for it, and then when we're at the track, we can do the the boost ramping, adjusting, yeah. and timing adjustments, things like that. This thing's gonna be nasty. How much do you think she'll weigh all set? So before with the factory front end and an iron small block, like full race weight nitrous car, with me in it, it was 2780. I raced it at anywhere from 2850 to 3100 pounds for class stuff. With this new front end being all chrome ollie and stuff, I probably took 150 pounds off the nose. Yeah, that's so serious. I'm this going, all new. yeah, it's all chrome ollie tubing and everything. So it's much lighter than the stock stuff. I'm going the single turbo methanol. So there's gonna be no intercooler, no ice tank, no nothing. So. It should weigh close to the same, if not like 2,600, 2,700 pounds at race weight. Yeah. Well, so much to this combo is going to be dialing in your converter, right? Getting the right converter. That's going to be half of your key. fight. And then also, it's a stock suspension car, so it's still leaf spring in the rear. And leaf springs are like Stone Age technology when it comes to drag racing. So getting them right is really tricky with the rear. You don't have, the only adjustment you have is a shock control. You don't, you can't change anything else, so. She's gonna be a ripper. Yeah. yeah, well. Now let's turn our yeah. attention to the old turd. The, the old turd. So guys, Ruby. We got some stuff to talk about. We were all thinking, we were on one of our long drives back from World Cup, and we were like, hey, obviously Ruby's current engine setup is, you know, it's we're pushing it right now, right? I mean we're pushing it. We're gonna lift ahead eventually, but we were thinking how cool would it be instead of just building another Turbo LS setup for this, which we could, I mean, we got we got stuff to do it, right? Obviously it's sitting here complete. We could hold on to this whole entire engine, turbo setup, the whole thing, keep it around for something in the future because for sure something's gonna come along and maybe do some sort of crazy engine swap into this thing, not a GM engine, maybe something or, I mean, a GM engine, but not an LS. So, I'll put a couple options up here in the corner. You can you can click it, vote for something. That doesn't mean it's set in stone, but I think it'd be cool to see almost like an import engine in this thing. As much as it kills me to say we're gonna put an import in a Corvette, it would be kind of a fun project. That'd so. be cool, put a Nissan sr 20 dt in it. Nah, we're just gonna uh, yeah. not focus on James Don't think anymore. We're gonna put an SR. <laughs> I need the, but, iconic, the iconic motor to do it with would probably be a two J. A two J Z would be pretty freaking sick. Or Is something there a from. Two J swap Corvette out there. Or if we go somewhere down under. Or a Barra. Or a Barra from Australia. Is yeah. It Barra or a Barra. Something like that, barrel maybe. Yeah, no, something, I something I that's inline six steel. Please that's all you need to know. Nobody say Triton V10. You will not catch us building any Triton V10. Anything that any has Triton so. and anything after that, just yeah. scratch it. The only so. Ford motor that I'm doing here is a barrel. I think what? people would be pissed to see a, a four cylinder in this thing. 
I mean, I was thinking oh, like, like a North Star, but... Oh, really? Oh, whew. That's another one. You know, I don't know where stars either. <laughs> <laughs> over there. But something like iconic, but we want it to make huge power, like 1500 horsepower, yeah. so that it can run sevens. So instead of just shooting for our 799, we could knock that number down easily with one of, you know, Leroy's motor or something like that. But we'd rather do it with something crazy. So this car has always been a crazy, cool, uh, unique engine so let's come up with something nutty and the, slap the, it in there. the thing about it is what this thing has done for what it is yeah. i mean it's literally the lower end cost rods and pistons stock block stock crank still five three bore mm -hmm. you know texas speed ass cast heads they're 1600 bucks basic stuff we had laying around thrown together turbo kit yep and it's been mid eights at 160 mile an hour mid eights every hit yeah on top of that it's probably got 3,000 miles street driven miles on the thing mm -hmm. i mean you took it and drove it around for two weeks we did drag week with this on motor. texas roadhouse yeah. mm, the only yeah. thing we have done to the motor is change the oil it almost it, it almost won that race at fl2k almost yeah almost yeah almost scared yeah. adam lz with it on the street yep and tj hunt yeah. So everyone, a lot of cool ideas that could come from this. We're gonna we're gonna work with you guys on that for sure. So drop some comments. Check out the ones I already stuck up here in the uh, little box thing. I don't know what it's called. But that's it for that. I guess let's talk about our neighbor real quick, and then we'll cut this video off. One more vehicle in this facility. Yeah. All right, guys. So neighbor after uh, Ford Fest. It's crazy, dude. We started it up, and it was just broad knocking, really bad. No, I'm kidding. I think so this thing was Rana, this thing's freaking bulletproof. So, yeah. we're, yeah. so we're doing a Triton V10 swap, guys. <laughs> no, for real, we, uh, this thing is just awesome, man. It really is a killer engine, and it's yeah. running running great. It fires right up every time, so it's sitting here ready to go for police cars. Might slap a set of chains on it before we go to police and cars because it's gonna see some rev limiter action there, or we might do it right after. Some gotta, snow chains, or? So he's tires, talking about pulling yes. the whole motor Fire chains. deal part. <laughs> right. the, chains here, boys. <laughs> the crazy thing about this is this motor is the one that has scared us the most because of how complex a you know overhead cam motor is. Yeah. But this thing takes the hardest beating out of any car in the fleet, it and does. it's pretty dependable. Yep. You know, it hasn't really let us down. It just, dude, this the old Ford. Honestly, I'm gonna give her a solid review. This is seven out of ten on this engine. Yeah. <laughs> So, neighbor's good to go though. We're not gonna mess with it before producing cars unless we Might do the chain swap. Methanol, we were talking about putting on methanol. Try to keep it cool, make a longer burnout. Yeah, if we can keep it cooler, we can do longer burnout. So, that's something to think about. But we don't have a lot of time. Police cars right around the corner, November 23rd here in Florida at Bradenton Motorsports Park. I Toast is still on a ship. Toast is still on Toast. a boat. Oh, it's new name is Bob. Because it's out there bobbing on a boat. Bobbing mm. on a boat. Hey, you, you did leak some oil though. Yeah, it's leaked oil. That's, All right. that's pretty standard. I was so, just so guys, we got some more videos coming for you on the second channel too about toast on the boat and how you guys can track him. But that is it for today. Just kind of a walk around update at the shop. I know it's a little bit more boring than our usual content, but sometimes you guys ask for a lot of these updates and we wanted to get them out to you. It's gonna be it for today. Thanks for watching. New for Bale. Freaking see you later.